<laughs> you got an email from your sysadmin class asking you to TA for his class even though you don't go to undergrad anymore. <laughs> I hated TAing. I, there were there were certain courses I liked it for and others I didn't. Um, I remember being a TA at for a, for a math class and um, I hated it so much. Not because of the subject matter, but because a lot of the college students just did not understand why which math class. It was an upper level statistics class. <laughs> So it wasn't like statistics one. It was like applied statistics for something, something, something. And it was like a like a higher level one. And it was um, filled with a lot of students that thought they might need it for their field. Um, but it was a lot deeper than what they would need. And also all of them kind of like fell up the stairs a lot into that class. Like Like a lot of them got through their first two stats classes by just rote memorization, but they didn't understand what they were doing. And the class I was TAing for was one that was called applied in the front, okay? And applied means you're having them just solve situations and do a lot of case studies and stuff over and over, and they need to understand why they're doing what they're doing. So a lot of it was understanding statistics and data, and we were having them do like peer review, mock peer review of a lot of things and telling us, you know, like, can this data set, can this set of statistics here be presented in front of an audience and and is it is it true right like making them research and it was so, <laughs> so not only would they have to do the work but they'd have to put together these full presentations <laughs> and it was just oh my god it was so much pain to try to explain this to students over and over it was the worst it was the worst man and it was like my favorite class but i couldn't I, uh, taing for that was was garbage garbage they'd be like don't i just need to know how to apply formulas and i'm like why you know you have to make a formula for this like what do you <laughs> like, there is no formula for this you have to like make one to get what you're looking for like i don't know i'm having them do things like like come up with like a degree of reliability for this physical part in a machine right like come up with a formula that would give you that and tell us why and it would be subjective too I'd, they'd be like what value should i put in here like what range is acceptable and i'd be like you tell me you make a presentation with different acceptable ranges and how you calculated them and then you tell me that's the point of this class <laughs> you know what i mean it was very um they, they would like get the math behind it if i explained it but if i told them to like come up with that they had they had a really hard time with it and I understand why it's tough. It's the sort of thing you'll understand more after getting some work experience, but like as a college student, I don't know. It's one of those classes where I'm like, I think they need to go get sent out on a job and then come back and take it. <laughs> Cause, Cause it's terrible, man, it's terrible. <laughs> Sounds like you had engineering students. Uh, it was a mix. It was some straight up in math. I think some of the students that did theoretical math actually understood that class pretty well. Because they're just sitting there coming up with ideas and here's how I could maybe mathematically prove this. This this should give us something within a degree of, you know, reliability or, or not even reliability, but like a degree of certainty, right? Then a lot of those theoretical math students understood it and then certain engineers got it. I felt like it was the ones that worked with like robotics, a lot of robotics classes. A lot of those students understood it because they were f used to kind of figuring things out as they went. But a lot of the, like the software engineers had a really hard time. <laughs> They'd be like, I want to be a soft en software engineer and I want to, you know, take a lot of upper level math courses because I want to work in this stuff. And then they would really struggle with the coming up with why part of it. So it was rough, man. It was rough. But I, I liked those classes. I had fun with them. Just TAing them was terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's hard to move from a world of right and wrong answers to a more subjective evaluation of things yeah yeah i think i think a lot of that is it's hard to teach yeah when when their entire college education was really about like determine this determine that right some people don't know how to properly study uh, that's also part of it but these concepts you need to learn them in like an environment that's applied or, or learn them through case studies and just being told you know up until that point here's how you find this value here's how you find that value and then getting thrown into that class is a lot <laughs> It's a lot, man. Mm. In your experience, engineering students assume there's a ready formula for everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, I remember one time, a long time ago, I was teaching one student. They were trying to do something for one of their presentations and I was teaching them about Monte Carlo simulations. And I was like, here's how 
they, they were like, hey, I, I know how to do this thing. I have no idea how to prove if this, like, is even possible like they were they were trying to learn about really high level probability essentially right for those who just don't know what we're talking about and i was like well <laughs> this is when you put things through simulations and through models and you run them over and over and over and over because you're trying to simulate something that you can't physically test over and over because maybe it's re you need really expensive things to build something to do this so you have to try and forecast and estimate before you actually physically do this thing and sometimes some jobs will ask you to do that right and, and ask you to forecast probabilities before they start building something and testing right you do you do like the theoretical phase and then you go into the physical testing phase so i was trying to teach that <laughs> that early like math phase of you know all of that and i was teaching one student how to do monte carlo simulations because he needed that specifically for this thing and i remember him just <laughs> i'll never forget we're sitting there we're just going over and over and over the same thing and he just puts his hand his hands on his face and looks down he just puts his head into like the desk and he just goes Ugh, and he just held that note for so long and i was like yeah literal shinji posing i was like hey uh the 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 topic you picked you're gonna need to do something like this so Oh, I, was, I felt so bad for him. I felt so fucking bad, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So that was the class that made you drop out of the programming field? Oh, doing stats and stuff? Yeah. No, a lot of people. A lot of people. I, I wouldn't say it made a lot of people drop out of, like, CS, but it made a lot of people realize that they don't want to work in certain parts of it, right? Certainly not. <laughs> And they're like, maybe I want to do product. <laughs> and they start like, let me learn UI, UX, you know, helps them realize that, that that ain't it for them. For sure. Defending a subjective answer requires critical thinking skills. Unfortunately, a lot of early education focuses memory-based stuff like formulas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very simply, they make kids memorize shit, right? They don't learn how to learn. They don't learn how to be subjective and, and how to prove why that subjectivity makes sense. Maybe they learn how to be subjective, but not the second part of that, right? And so you end up with a lot of kids, it's not their fault, they're just raised that way, and they only know how to answer questions with definitive answers. And that's, uh, you do them a disservice, right? Because there are other ways to think. There are a lot of other ways to think. You went back and you became a lawyer, so when you do math now, you get real mad. <laughs> hey, good for you, don't do shit that you hate. I'm just gonna say I am VBA's strongest warrior and I love it, okay? And I know, I know a lot of you, if you've dealt with it, you probably hate it. I don't love it because I think it's good at all. I think it's bad. I think it's very, very bad, but I think it can do everything that I need it to do, okay?